Um, hello everybody, I'm Annette from Annette's Makes and Bakes and I'm going to show you how to make these four lovely designs for Halloween and underneath each one is a Terry's Chocolate Orange. Um, these are super easy to make. The video that I'm, um, I've done for you will show you how to make all four. Okay, um, and you can skip through. So if you just want to make the ghost, just skip through to the bit where um, the ghost is. Um, but I did it all in one video because it really doesn't take very long. Um, I show you all the equipment that you need, which isn't a great deal. Um, and little tips and hints on um, where to get the things that you need and other things that you can use if you, that you might just have at home. Okay, so um, I did an eyeball and you can see on the back, so it looks pretty gory, pretty, pretty little ghost, but you don't have to do the, um, the pumpkin ring around the top. You can just have it as a ghost to keep it really simple. Um, a very simple pumpkin design as well. And then we've got the Nightmare Before Christmas um, Jack's head. Okay, all really simple ideas to do, great fun to make, and they would be fabulous to make with the kids. Please subscribe um, so that you see all the new videos that I do. And um, I hope you really enjoy watching my video and having a go at making these yourselves. And if you need any help at all, just message me and I'll um, do whatever I can to help. Okay, thanks very much and um, have fun. Okay. I'm going to show you how to make the Terry's Chocolate Orange Ghost. And this is the first one that I'm going to do. I will show you how to make all of them. So obviously you need a Terry's Chocolate Orange. Mine fell apart, so I've secured it with some um, icing. Um, you're going to need round cutters, um, different sizes. But if you haven't got round cutters, then you can just freehand everything. Um, I use a pizza cutter to cut my, I do cut on my icing, but you can freehand it with a sharp knife. Um, I'm using a scalpel, but you can also use like a kitchen knife. This is my palette knife that I use to lift everything up with, um, but you can just use any knife at all. I have a, um, this is a Dresden tool and, um, I'm going to use this to do the grooves in the pumpkin, but you can just use your fingers if you want. Um, rolling pin. If you haven't got a rolling pin, then just use um, a bottle, maybe a wine bottle or something like that. Um, I use corn flour to um, dust my top with, um, but you can use icing sugar if you want to stop everything from sticking. You will also need a um, paintbrush and some water, although if you just use some water and your finger, you can do that. And to make the dark brown on the pumpkin, which you'll see in a bit, um, you can use brown food colouring or just to make it easy for you today, um, use cocoa powder. OK, you can use this to do it and it also tastes nice as well. All right. So to start off with. I'm just going to roll out a piece of um, icing. Oh, the other thing that you're going to need is um, a board to put your uh, little ghost on. If you haven't got um, little cake boards like this, which most people won't have, just cut out a round piece or a square piece of um, cardboard and cover it in tin foil. Okay, so it makes it cake safe. Okay, so... I'm just going to dust my area so I can roll out my icing. Um, it doesn't have to be too thick. And the one thing that you need to remember about fondant icing, um, which you can buy from any supermarket now, Aldi's are doing it as well at the moment because it's coming up to um, Christmas and they start selling it again. So you can buy it quite cheaply in there. Um, Just roll it out so that it is roughly about three millimeters thick okay so that's going to give you a nice area 
and this is roughly I guess about eight inches around at the moment I'm going to cut this and just random cuts around doesn't need to be exact because obviously it's going to be for a ghost All right so let's just check that that will fit on yeah that will fit on lovely okay so to secure it to your orange just wet the middle don't have to wet it all not too much water and then just wet the middle and then just push it in <clears throat> keep going around until you've got a shape that you're happy with put some folds in so you're making it look like a ghost okay and then I'm just going to cut that extra bit off there. All right. So just to make this raise up a little bit, I'm just going to take some of this spare ice in. Roll it into a ball. Get your board. A bit of water on your board. Not too much. And then... I'm going to make a platform for it to sit on. Maybe make it a little bit higher. So do it into a ball. Stick it on there. So it's nicely stuck in the middle. A bit of water. Pop your ghosty on top. Push it down so that it's Firm. and then just play around with it until you're happy okay so that's done um, I forgot to say that you're going to need some coloured icing as well you'll need some um, orange icing for the little pumpkins on top some green icing for the pumpkin tendrils and also some black icing for the ghosty eyes okay so just roll out a little bit of your black icing okay I have um, a series of different size cutters okay I'm going to use not the smallest one the next one um, if you haven't got the cutters just cut it by hand you don't have to be perfect on this and especially if you're doing it with the kids um, just let them cut it by hand or if you have like um, an icing nozzle you can use the end of that to cut it and then some icing and water on the front of the icing and pop your eyes on okay so you can see the eyes on there before I finish those off I'm just going to roll this green out into really long thin sausage snake whatever and this is to do the tendrils now it doesn't have to be as thin as it shows in the picture that I've got um, but and it doesn't have to be perfectly you know every every bit of it the same size the actual um, more sort of like imperfections you have in it the more realistic it's going to look so just roll that out as long as you can and kids will enjoy doing this get 
your little ghosty and put water around the top so that you kind of stick your green to it. Roll it out a bit thinner actually. Roll it out as thin as you can so that it um, doesn't take up too much space. You don't have to do two uh, rounds like on my original picture. You can just do one. So we'll start, fix it on. And just put it around. And then we'll do a second one. And then just pinch it off on there. Okay, pretty happy with that. All right, for your little pumpkins, take a ball. Needs to be about pea size, large pea size. Roll it into a ball. All right, and then take. If you haven't got a Dresden tool, use the back of a knife. You can use the back of a knife to do it like that. Okay, so you still get the same indentations. But I'm gonna use my tool. Just go all the way around, scoring the mark into it. And then with the end of your paintbrush, just pop a little indentation into it. Bit of water on there and pop it on. Okay, so there we go. Do another one. So about pea size, okay. Use my tool to make an indentation in it. All the way around. End of your paintbrush to make an indentation in the top. A little bit of water and then just pop it on. Okay. And then just keep doing that <clears throat> until you're happy with the amount that you've got on. Okay, so I have um, finished doing all the little pumpkins around. I'm now going to um, finish the stems on the pumpkin. So once again, you need the green. Roll it out as thin as you can. And you'll notice I've got little indentations in there. I'm just gonna pop a bit of water in each one of those. And then take a pinch of one of these and then literally just twist it. And then pop it in the end of there. So there you go. All right, so take a bit of green icing, twist it so you have little curly tail like that and pop it into there okay a little bit of icing just twist it in your fingers and pop it into there again okay so I'm just rolling it in my fingers and then twisting it so it goes in like a curly tail and then pop it into the indentation that you've made last one and then just twist it until it's a little curly tail and pop it into there Okay, so now we're just going to finish off 
the um, ghosties eyes so you need to make sure that the surface of the black is wet take a little bit of ice in like a um, petit pois pea size roll it in your fingers Okay, so it's about that size. Pop it on. Just push it on. Okay. So, same again. About petit pois size. Get that. And do it that way. Pop it on. And just push it on. Okay. You can if you want. Do another really tiny one, about that size. Okay, and then just put it up there. Pop it on. Just gives it a bit more of a feminine look, I guess. If you want to stay it looking sort of more masculine, although with the pumpkins in the hair, should be female really. And then... There we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see that look. All right. Oh, where was that one? Oh, I missed one. Okay, let's just finish that one off quickly. So once again, I'm just rolling it in my fingers, twisting it around. that in there yeah it did look like there was one missing okay so ghost is nearly finished but just to give a bit more authenticity let's give him a full mouth and give her an all mouth so another pea size piece of black icing just roll it in your fingers a little bit of water on the icing and then on there and there you have it there's your pretty little ghosty all right so took a few minutes to make it's really easy great fun to do with the kids all right so that's that one okay <clears throat> so now we're going to show i'm going to show you how to make the um jack from the nightmare before christmas head and for this again obviously you need your chocolate orange luckily this one hasn't fallen apart some white icing okay and some black icing and that's pretty much all you're going to need item wise and um a cutter which needs to be Run about an inch or so across. All right. If you haven't got a cutter, then don't worry. Just freehand it. Um, a sharp knife or a scalpel, which I use. And um, I use a pizza cutter to cut out my icing. But um, you can just use a sharp knife. Rolling pin. If you haven't got a rolling pin, then just use a bottle, like a wine bottle or something. Anything like that will roll out some icing. I use corn flour to um, dust my surface with to um, make sure nothing sticks. <clears throat> you can use icing sugar if you want to. I'm just sorry, just cleaning up from the before. And also um, a board to put your head on but if you haven't got a board just cut out some cardboard and cover it in tin foil just to make it cake safe okay so first thing you're going to do is get a little bit of ice in and make sure that i'm just going to stick that in underneath my orange just roll out a little bit and then just stick it so it actually sits flat all right and then 
about 100 grams of white icing. Dust your surface just to make sure nothing sticks. And a little bit on top of the icing. <clears throat> and then roll out your icing until it's roughly about three millimeters thick. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's pretty much it. And then if you look, you can see it's probably pretty much three millimeters. All right. So what that does is gives you thick enough cover to not show any of the grooves that you've got on your chocolate orange. So I've turned it over. I'm just going to wet all of that so it sticks to your orange. Grab your orange. Okay. And then put the icing over the top. Now, <clears throat> fondant icing is great in that it will fold in onto itself. And if you get little grooves in it, you can actually smooth them out. So... We're just going to do that so it goes all the way around, just using the sides of your, the soft part of your hands. And then I'm going to cut around all of that, get rid of the excess. <clears throat> and then pull that into the bottom, just cup in the orange in your hand. Oh, pulled that off a little bit too much and then I'm going to pinch that off okay and just make it nice and smooth still got too much on the bottom pinch that off and just use the warmth of your hand and your fingers just to smooth it off all right so you want it as smooth as you possibly can. So just using your hands, smooth it down. One, it gives it a nice shiny surface. Two, it smooths out any wrinkles or imperfections you might have on it. Okay. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be perfect. All right. So you can see that. That's pretty nice. Okay, so get your board, a little bit of water in the middle of your board. <clears throat> and then just pop that in the middle, maneuver it around so it sticks nicely. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And you can see, all right. And get your black icing. You don't need very much. Um, you can buy black icing pre-made from any of the supermarkets now um, in little blocks. It's not too expensive, but it's ready colored for you. Bit of corn flour on your surface and a little bit on top roll that out that bit. and you want it <clears throat> so it's just a couple of millimeters thick okay so not too thick and then that's too big so we'll use this one so this one is about an inch across all right the other one's a little bit too big so put some water ready on your icing okay cut out your first circle and then your second one 
Now his eyes aren't exactly the same. So <clears throat> one of them is more oval shaped. One of them is round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off pretty much like a moon shape. Cut that off. Don't want that. Okay. And then place that on the front of your Okay, so you can see one is slightly smaller than the other one. Now Jack has a a really sort of like a stitched face. So you can use this piece that you've cut off the eye and just roll it out. And that's going to be just a little bit too big so we don't need all that take a little bit off <clears throat> roll it out and then stick that on the front in a smile all right and then use what you've got left make little pieces to make your stitches across Just roll it between your finger and thumb so you've got little pieces like that. Yeah, so about a centimeter long. Just gonna make sure there's enough water on there to put all the stitching on. We'll start at this end. Literally, you do that all the way along. Now you can, if you want, if you've got an edible food pen, use that as well. And just keep doing that all the way along until you've got his stitched face. And he's probably the easiest one of all to do. And there you go, you have Jack's face very simple one to do okay so the next one I'm going to do is the eyeball so obviously you need your uh, Terry's chocolate orange you need a board and if you haven't got a board just cut out some um, cardboard and cover it in tin foil to make it cake safe uh, some white icing a bit of blue icing and a bit of black icing um, you are also going to need some um red food paint you can buy little tubes um i think it's dr Arcos or whatever even as does or tesco's do their own little food um color gels that you can use um you will need a paintbrush all right um one you need a paintbrush for some water but also you need to paint the red um lines on the eyes and um, you will also need round cutters for the for the eye um, iris of the eye and some jam for the back of the eye um, or you can use red food coloring or whatever you like um, or you can just leave it just um, white if you want to so I'll start off with orange okay my first orange fell apart. So if your orange falls apart, um, just use a little bit of icing and stick it onto either the top or bottom just to hold the um, orange together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is roll out the white icing. Now I use corn flour to dust my surface and a bit on the Top so it doesn't stick roll it out with your rolling pin if you haven't got a rolling pin as I've said before just use a something like a wine bottle or anything that's got a nice round smooth surface 
and you need to roll your icing out to about three centimeters thick and the reason you need it that thick is because it then um, doesn't let all the grooves you your orange has got grooves in it um, it just makes sure that you don't see any of the grooves all right so I've rolled that out you can see that's about three centimeters thick flip it over and you need to wet this side okay <clears throat> and then that is what is going to stick to your chocolate orange okay so just pop that over and then use these soft parts of your hand just to smooth the icing down around pull it out a little bit just smooth it in Just pull it out a little bit, smooth it in. Don't pull it too much, but you just sort of like straightening out so that you get a fairly smooth finish on it. You won't get the perfectly smooth finish on it, but just cup your hands round. And the nice thing about icing, fondant icing, is it folds in onto itself <clears throat> and it allows you to smooth out any imperfections that you might have so i'm going to cut round that just use a sharp knife if you haven't got a pizza cutter like i use the reason i use a pizza cutter is you get a lot smoother line get rid of the excess icing let's just get that up and put that at the back now I actually want to leave this bit here at the back because your eyeball isn't round it's that shaped when it's in your eye and I want all those imperfections there um, because it's just going to make it look more authentic so then put the knobbly bits slightly down okay I'm going to just put bit of water on the board and just stick that down okay so <clears throat> you can see the back of your eye it's not perfect at all you don't want it perfect okay you want it so that it is looking all knobbly and horrible so we can either paint that with jam or you can paint it with red food coloring um, whatever you like okay so now we need to do the blue eyeball. So I'm going to roll out that eyeball. So using the corn flour, or if you've not got corn flour, use icing sugar to roll it out. I tend to use corn flour one because it doesn't leave any taste at all, and two. Icing sugar coming into contact with any kind of moisture will obviously um, get really sticky, which is not what you want. So I tend to use corn flour all the time. Okay, so you need to do a circle bit of water for it to stick to. And I'm going to use this size cutter. This is an inch and a half cutter. The size I used for jacks was the inch across, so you can see it's just a bit bigger. All right, so cut that out. <clears throat> and I am going to smooth the edges out between my finger and thumb because I don't want that thick ridge. I want it nice and smooth. One, it makes it just a little bit bigger but also it makes it go flush with the icing. Okay, so just very gently smoothing that out on the edge. So I've no longer got a horrible thick edge. I've just got a nice smooth edge like that. Okay, I'm gonna place that right in the middle. Make sure that's stuck on 
fine. Okay, and then <clears throat> you want some black. Don't need very much, just a tiny little bit. And roll that out. Okay, so I'm going to roll that out so it's fairly thin. It's about a millimeter. I can then a bit more water on here as well. And so I'm using the next size down cutter. And if you haven't got a cutter, just freehand it. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. And once again, just very gently smooth out the edges so it's not stood out on your eyeball. It's actually going to sit nice and flush so you can see it's all smoothed out. And then I'll put that. I'm not actually going to put it in the middle. I'm going to put it slightly down. Okay. So it's not in the middle of the iris, it's just slightly down, but you can put it wherever you want, really. Need a tiny little bit of white. And just roll half a petit pois size ball. It's a bit too much. Just roll it round. Okay, so you can see that. And then we're going to pop that on there. Okay. Now, you can use blue food colouring if you want to, to make additional lines or even black food colouring. Um, I'm actually going to use blue. Just to colour this in a little bit more, um, give it a bit more definition. And just make it look a little bit more real. If you haven't got a pen, just use some <clears throat> blue food colouring, which isn't that expensive. Um, from any of the supermarkets as well and you can just buy the um, the liquid one it doesn't have to be a gel I never put gel color um, liquid colors into icing to color them because all it does is add water volume to your icing and it makes it horrible and sticky um, if you're going to add color to white icing always use the gels so that it doesn't add any liquid as such. I'm just going to make it look as real as we can. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. But because it's, you know, sort of like a ghosty eye, um, the imperfections are probably better on it than <clears throat> not having any imperfection or making it perfect. Just makes it look a little bit more gruesome. Okay, so I'm happy with that. <clears throat> And then we're going to use some red food colouring to make all the veins and everything else. So um, I'm not going to do it on my work surface. What I'm going to do is pop a little bit into the lid. Okay, so you can see that in the lid. Okay, so to do the painting on the eyeball... I would use um, a thinner paintbrush, all right? And I put a little bit of water in there. I'm just going to mix that in, just a little. 
and then really it's up to you what you do with this um, but you can just have a bit of fun and get make it look bloodshot okay you can see it's come into life already don't worry about being too exact with it just needs to look gruesome and horrible so you can see I'm being pretty random not really bothering too much about being perfect and just keep going until you're happy with the finish that you've got as you can see that's really starting to look pretty cool now okay so it doesn't take much now you can finish the back off literally by using food colouring and I'm using this paintbrush like this you can just use any paintbrush and then really all you want to do you see that looks pretty gory doesn't it being very random with it not bothering too much just so it looks all bloody and horrible now you can use jam if you um haven't got food coloring and even if you don't want to use red food coloring for the um eye bits here just use jam i'm just going to put some extra dark splodges And there you go that'll do and so there you have your eyeball and underneath that is a chocolate orange so that actually looks pretty cool as well doesn't it okay and the kids will love doing them i'm having fun doing these as well and they're really really simple and easy to do okay so that's that one Okay, so the last one I'm going to do is the pumpkin one. And for this, you're going to need some orange um, fondant icing. Obviously, your chocolate orange. Um, if you haven't got orange food colouring, just mix some red and yellow together. Um, you can buy little 250 gram blocks of um, coloured icing, ready coloured icing. Just mix some red and yellow together. That'll give you that. You can also buy green. I've got a couple of shades of green here, which um, I'll show you what I'm going to do with in a minute. Your board um, as well. If you haven't got a board, then um, just cut some cardboard out and cover it in tin foil, as I've said each time. Um, you're also going to need some Oreos. Okay, and you're going to need some broken up Oreos. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is roll out a bit of the green. I'm just going to mix those two colours together a little bit. Just mix them together. I use corn flour to dust my work surface with. A bit on top so nothing sticks. All right, and just going to roll out a bit of this, and I'm going to use the fondant icing to um, stick the Oreos to because you can't stick them with water. Um, they're not going to stick very well you could use some royal icing if you wanted to do it that way um, but I'm just going to pop some water on my board stick the icing to it and I'm just leaving it like that so it's it's not 
perfect at all. And then I'm just going to put my Oreos on and then push them into the fondant icing so that they actually stick and don't move. Okay. And it's fine to have the green there as well because it just looks like real earthy, grassy stuff. All right. Okay. So I'm just going to pop that to one side for a minute and then clean up the Oreo mess. Okay, get my orange. Now, sometimes when you unpack the orange, they um, break. So if they do come apart, just get a little bit of icing, um, a little bit of water and stick the icing onto it and it, that will hold it um, back together again. Okay. I had to do that on my first one. Um, because it fell apart. Luckily, none of the others have fallen apart, but you can't help if you do. All right, so corn flour. So it doesn't stick. Roll it out. And roll it out till it's about <clears throat> three centimetres thick. Now, it doesn't matter. Obviously, you saw the size of the piece that I had. Um, doesn't have to be perfectly round or anything so you're going to cut off a lot of this anyway okay so you can see that there how thick that is turn it over I'm going to brush this with water so it sticks to your chocolate orange bring your chocolate orange in and then just drop it over the top Okay, now I've said to you each time, if you watched the whole thing or the other ones that I've done, just use the soft parts of your hand to smooth down around and you can just get the icing to go in underneath. Now, a bit of water, so it's just stop that from sticking that's better all right so just keep smoothing it down around until you're happy take off a lot of the excess and you can do that just using a sharp knife and then push the rest and underneath Okay, now I'm going to carry on and take off quite a bit of this because there's still too much there. And then I'm going to okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm going to use what's called a Dresden tool. Um, which cake make every cake maker has all right if you haven't got one of these so it's got sort of like a, a curved pointed end just use like a kebab stick or even a cocktail stick and all you've got to do start at the top and then just make a groove going down through and where you've made that groove and just use your hand your finger sorry so you've got a nice indent in it. And you can see it's actually gone through to almost to the chocolate orange, but that doesn't matter because you're actually going to um, darken this bit anyway. All right, so I'm going to go around, do another one. And then just use your finger. So you're just making that gap wider. All right, do it again. Just use your finger and make that gap wider. And 
again and just keep going around doing that to make your pumpkin shaped grooves if you get any ridges just smooth them out and like I say to you that fondant icing is great because it allows you to smooth out all the imperfections that you have but obviously being a pumpkin you don't want it to be too perfect I'm going to do two more one there and one there okay so you can see the beginnings of the pumpkin shape now i'm going to use my finger again um with a little bit of cornflour on so it doesn't stick and i'm going to bring all those grooves right into the center okay okay so you can see all those grooves are now right into the center all right and then using my rolling pin if you haven't got a um, rolling pin you can use your thumb but I'm just going to make that indentation on the top all right and then finalize it by using my finger so it looks more real. Okay, so you can see that. All right, now these need to be darkened down and to do that i'm going to use a paintbrush and some cocoa um one because cocoa tastes nice and two it's a cheap way of doing it most people have cocoa if you haven't got cocoa you can use hot chocolate if you've got some in the house and literally i'm going to make these bits in here darker don't need very much only a little smidge on your paintbrush um, if you haven't got cocoa and um, you've got food coloring just use brown food coloring and paint it on All right so just get it into those grooves around the edges it just adds that definition to your pumpkin so there you have the beginnings well pretty much the whole bit of your pumpkin so now we're going to put a bit of water on the bottom of your pumpkin and we're going to seat it onto not too much water on it because obviously it will just make all the um oreo biscuits really soggy you don't really want that so a little bit of water put that on and just press it on so it stays there okay so that's looking pretty cool at the moment isn't it and the last thing we're going to do is make the stem with some tendrils now i've used both bits of green you don't have to but it just has a bit more of an authentic color into it so take off lump roll um, I would say ping pong ball size, maybe a bit smaller in your hand, and then roll it so you've got one end slightly 
thinner than the other one okay just going to cut that off and using my tool i'm just going to put some grooves in it so this is the bit where it gets cut off in the field okay little twist bit of water in there and there's your stump all right so that's the first bit and then i'm going to do could just leave it like that so that looks quite good um but i'm actually going to do some of the tendrils that go down as well and they're the feeder lines that come off of the pumpkins to get water and nutrients from the ground so take a bit of your green ice in roll it out till it's reasonably thin sorry you can't see that can you so yeah just roll it out until it's fairly thin All right. Do you want some water around here for it to stick on? Okay, so you want some water around here for it to stick on. And keep your paintbrush handy. So I'm going to take off a piece. It could be any length you like. And I'm going to to get in there and then literally curl it and you can have as much fun as you like with this curling bits I'm gonna pull that off and then with the paintbrush that's still got some water on it dampen that and then just put them into place you're happy okay so first one all right let's do another couple all right so i'm going to stick that one there i'm just going to push that in a little bit with the paintbrush keep your paintbrush handy and then just curl it. A little bit of water where you want it to finish up. And stick it down. All right. And I'm just going to do one more, I think. All right. So taking your paintbrush. Make sure that's wet. Just pop it in there so it sticks really well. And then just curl it round. A little bit of water so you're happy where it's gonna go and there you go that's it so I'm really happy with that I think that looks really cool all right so I hope you've enjoyed watching my video and have fun making them you can buy um, the Terry Chocolate Oranges in, if you search around, there's quite a few places now they are actually doing them um, for a pound each. So, you know, it's not an expensive thing to do, really. Um, Coloured icing isn't too expensive either. Um, and you don't need a massive amount of colours. You re really need white, black, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green and um, orange or some red and yellow so you can mix it together um, and away you go have some fun all right i hope you've enjoyed watching 
uh, my video. I really hope you enjoy making these. Have a go with the kids and um, I will catch up with you soon.